What up YouTube? Just moved into the new office. Sorry everything has been taking so long. Over there we got Devin's desk, um, all of his four monitors, which let's be honest, he's never gonna use. Uh, and then his stand-up desk in the corner. And then we got my desk, of course, everything set up. I'm pretty pragmatic about everything, so not really too fancy of a tower. I mean, down here, maybe I'll throw the specs on the screen, but it's pretty standard tower. And then to the right of that, we just have my extra setup with my laptop, everything that I need for work, extra monitors. We got a light, closet for everything. It's nice to have an office with a few more amenities and that's more convenient, especially since I spend so much time there working. All right, let's get started. I am terrible at graphs and dynamic programming. I don't know these concepts. How did you approach these topics and solve questions pertaining to them? I can stare at the question for a whole day and still not be able to solve it. Just wanted to know if I can still learn these topics by looking at video solutions. Well, definitely don't stare at the problem for a whole day. I mean, the interview only lasts 45 minutes, an hour at most. So I don't see why you would try to spend more time than that trying to solve the problem. Um, definitely just skip to the solution if it's taking you more than 45 minutes or an hour on the problem. And especially when it comes to dynamic programming, um, it's more of an approach to solve the problem than a specific algorithm or data structure. So personally, I think that you're going to learn it a lot faster if you see multiple examples and solutions as opposed to uh, just spending all your time solving one and then moving on to the next one. Um, yeah. Did you use JavaScript? Yes, I did use JavaScript for all of my interviews and I would recommend you tell your hiring manager if you plan on doing the same. A lot of people probably aren't accustomed to seeing that in an interview, especially if it's super data structure or algorithm heavy. Uh, additionally, I would honestly ask yourself whether or not you want to use JavaScript. Uh, I think most of the context that m people use JavaScript in is in front-end development and you don't see a lot of data structure or algorithm usage there. And so you should really be comfortable using JavaScript on a very intimate level as opposed to a front-end only level. All right, what sections and difficulties do you recommend for Algo Expert? Mostly on medium and hard. Is it very hard or worth the time or just a waste? Would you compare the questions from Google to the easy, medium, hard, or very hard questions on Algo Expert? Nice video, this response would really help me out, thank you. Um, yeah, so I'm just bundling these two together because they're similar. I would say the majority of my interview questions were hard in comparison to Algo Expert categories. Occasionally you'd get a medium question that was built on by a secondary part, and then occasionally you would get an extra hard question and they may or may not expect you to be able to get all the way through it. So I would recommend you focus on hard level questions. And if, I mean, at the beginning that's too difficult, start with medium. Uh, the easy level questions are really just warm ups, honestly. So yeah, focus on hard, do some medium, do some extra hard, but definitely expect hard level questions. May I ask where you learn the OS stuff? Threads, processes, locks. I can't find anything on Algo Expert. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so for the basic Algo Expert algorithms and in, in data structures uh, study, I, we, there is, I don't think, any coverage on that those subjects. Um, and I didn't really see any questions similar to that in any of the interviews I've had um, for fan companies, at least in software engineer position. But I did interview for a um, SRE position at Microsoft and they did have a specific interview that was dedicated to sort of miscellaneous questions that had to do with locks or threads or incident management and it did cover some of these subjects so it's not useless to know about you really should uh, know these things depending on the job that you're interviewing for and um, but aside from that a lot of this stuff is just learn contextually on the job or, or you know during college if you if you have it if you're getting a degree how many problems did you do before your interviews 62 Thanks for the awesome content and congrats. Were Algo Expert and the Algorithms Design Manual the only resources you used for the most part, or did you also use leak code? Uh, I used Algo Expert and the Algorithms Design Manual uh, for the most part. Uh, there was definitely some things I had to Google and use YouTube or articles to do. For example, if I wanted to implement Dijkstra's algorithm, uh, well, I'm using JavaScript and studying with JavaScript, so that implementation isn't going to be on Algo Expert, and it's also not going to be in the design algorithms uh, book, so I needed to Google that and 
study that implementation. So there are definitely like edge cases and scenarios where you will need to uh, use extra materials. So I definitely encourage you to branch out and use multiple different sources for your studying. What would you suggest to an undergrad who seeks to work at Google? What kind of projects one should have and how to get an interview opportunity at Google? Uh, well, obviously you need to apply. Um, make sure your resume is really tidy and neat. Um, you want to have a lot of buzzwords in your resume because they're often read by resume scanners that pick up on those buzzwords and will just remove resumes from the list that don't match enough. So having an objective section is a good way to put in a couple sentences about yourself where you can describe yourself using a lot of buzzwords. Um, some other common things I tell people is to have your resume reviewed by your friends and family, check for grammatical and spelling errors, make sure that everything is proper and written well. And then um, also make sure to thin your skills section. Don't list anything you've just used a couple times. Try to list only things that you at least have moderate experience with. Even if you're just coming out of college or you're looking for internships, really only list things you've been actively studying in school or you have good personal experience with. Nothing that you've just used a couple times for one project. All right, that's probably it for me today. Uh, once again, sorry for not posting in a while. I do have some really cool stuff coming up that has to do with Chrome extensions and some financial websites. I don't wanna give up too much information, but keep on the lookout for that. It'll be coming out soon. Uh, thanks again and see you later.